everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of Monday Morning Mojo with me, Anna Gibbs. And it's really exciting because I have a special guest with me today. I am excited to introduce you to Tara Stubbins, the ultimate success catalyst and lifestyle guru, passionate about hitting goals. She has an impressive resume spanning over two decades, and she is certainly not your average CEO. She is a certified lifestyle manager, accountability and time management coach, and celebrity concierge. She has mastered the art of helping others achieve their goals and soar to rock star status. So Tara, thank you for being here. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here and to dive in. Me too. I have to just start with a couple things about your resume. And it seems like you have this knack for helping people probably do more in less time. But talk to me a little bit about the celebrity concierge. You know that there's someone listening who wants to jump onto that too. Tell us how you got started on all of this because you have an interesting story. Yeah, actually, it goes back to when I was really, really little. And I used to have a t-shirt that said, remember me, I'm going to be a star. And I wore that shirt everywhere to the point where it disintegrated. I really wish I still had it today. But the problem was, is that I have and had very little musical talent. Yes, there's a guitar behind me, but when I try to play it, it usually sounds like a dying animal. And I always tried, but I just, I I didn't put a lot of effort into it. And I just wasn't, I just wasn't any good. So I thought when my very like young seven, eight year old brain, I thought that being a star was being like a rock star. And I thought because I didn't have this musical talent that like, that's it. I'm just going to throw away my big dream. I'm just going to be this normal human being who can't achieve their goals. But for some reason, and I tell this story a lot, I really wish I, I knew why and I don't, but something inside me told me not to throw away the entire dream. So I held on to 0.001% of it and I walked around with it every day. But there's days, weeks, years would go by where I wouldn't even remember that my little childhood dream was to be a massive rock star. Until those like pivotal moments in life came up where you have to make those big decisions. Am I going to go this way or am I going to go that way? And I would go, oh, yeah, I wanted to be a rock star. Okay, still can't dance, still can't sing. Like most of us, right? We've all held on to that dream, yes. Still can't replay that musical instrument. But it helped guide me to a point where I actually could do and, and was doing something that I absolutely really loved. And that was still in the entertainment industry, but being a personal assistant to some really, really big rock stars. So I know it sounds easy. There was a ton of, that's a whole other podcast, a ton of hiccups along the way and things that I had to overcome, but being able to keep that dream, even a little tiny bit of it helped guide me to the point of being a personal assistant and doing something that I really loved doing. So for years, I was helping really big rock stars, Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones and Kiss and Lady Gaga, and the list goes on and on. And I really absolutely loved doing what I was doing, even if it was getting them coffee or cleaning out gross tour buses and hotel rooms and all of the crazy things that kind of go along with the rock and roll industry. I still absolutely loved it. So I knew I was in the right direction and continuing on the path that I was here meant to do. That's awesome. There's so many great things about what you just said. Having a dream, first of all, even one that we've had since we were a young child and holding on to just a part of it that was able to create vision and guide you into the life that you're living. And one of the things that I read about you is what you said about your mission and that you feel that you've been put here to help other people succeed. And I can certainly relate to that. And a lot of the listeners and followers of this podcast are people who are looking to achieve bigger results in their life and in their business, probably somewhat entrepreneurial or in a sales driven business. 
And I talk a lot about living a big life or building a big business, yet I don't intend that to mean that you have to take on more than you can handle. And that's where you come in to help people basically understand some of the principles of organization, time management, and so much more. So what really motivates you to do that? And what are some of the secrets of accountability and time management that you could share with the the listeners today? Yeah, I love what you keep sharing about how dream big and anyone can achieve their goals and their dreams. And I believe this same, the same thing. I like to say that I believe that I, and I truly believe that anyone can become their the Beyonce or Taylor Swift or Drake of their own lives, depending on who the popular person is right now. But that doesn't necessarily mean being up on the stage as a massive rock star. It can be whatever your own dream is for your own life. So it can be being the best parent. It can be being the best volunteer It can be being an amazing neighbor in your community, whatever it is that you hold true and believing in yourself and your own big goals and not someone else's big goals. Exactly. So when you take that down and and again, that's what motivates me is that I've built two really successful businesses with zero business background at all. And with just the drive and determination to help as many people as I possibly can. And when I understand that creating my own motivation to do that has created success, and I see from the massive, extremely successful and high uh, profile individuals that I support, that they do the same thing. So they're not waiting for that lightning strike moment to feel the motivation. They're out there knowing exactly what their goal is and Mm -hmm. focusing on their goal and creating their own motivation. So I would say that would be step number one. To have a vision, know what your goals are. Exactly. To have a vision, know what your goals are. As we said, even if it's just a little percentage of that goal, really being hyper-focused on what are you doing on the day-to-day basis to achieve that goal. I talk a lot about being in today's society, what I call the cult of busy. So Mm -hmm. especially when you're driving towards a big goal, building a business, starting a business, growing a business, whatever your big goal is, sometimes we can get caught in that I'm busy, so I'm successful mentality when it's really not the case. Being busy is absolutely something that you need to have to be a success but are you the right type of busy? Are you concentrating and filling your calendar and your days with the right tasks, the right Right. meetings that are actually helping you achieve that big goal? So being able to know your vision, being able to really understand what that goal or vision is, and then being able to break that down into what am I doing on a day-to-day basis that is actually helping me achieve that goal? And I like to reflect at the end of the day and think, did I do at least one, I like to call it needle moving task today Mm -hmm. that is going to help me as Tara tomorrow or in a year from now? Yeah. And if I don't, then it's not necessarily a good day for me. Yeah. And I think that this is something that really, I think affects a lot of people is that they're constantly moving and doing a lot of things during the day, feeling very busy, yet we can't always confuse movement for progress. And it's really about being productive, but you can't measure productivity if you don't have the goal first. So I I would agree with that. I, I know we hear a lot about write down your top three priorities of the day. And then if you can check those off, you've been productive which I totally agree with, but I think people confuse sometimes like important life tasks with what is actually moving the needle. So I have to renew my passport. Absolutely. That's important. Is that going to move your needle today? Maybe not. Maybe it is. Maybe you travel for a living and absolutely have to, but really evaluating what's like an important life task and what are those tasks that are helping you get closer to your goal? Yeah, for sure. And another thing that I know you really talk a lot about and help clients with is really 
creating some sort of balance in their life or flow in their life. As we've touched on being a business owner, building it, scaling it, starting it, it's very time consuming. It uses a lot of our energy and passion. It could feel like it's taking over our lives and yet it doesn't have to. So what are some thoughts on that? And how could you help someone who might be listening right now who's feeling that way? Yeah, I actually want to share a little story before I dive into that. And when I first started my business, I, as I said, had zero business background at all. And so what do you do when you don't know anything? You Google it. And that was back in 2007 where Google wasn't as sophisticated, but I'm pretty sure it will still give you the same answers. So I Googled like how to run a successful business, but I also Googled what does a successful CEO look like? Or what are the tasks that a successful business owner does on a day-to-day basis? And everything that Google told me was that successful people exercise. And I was like, what is this? You don't understand. And I was like, why do I have to exercise to be successful? Like I couldn't wrap my head around it. And it took years for me to figure out that the reason why successful people exercise is because it allows them to be able to focus on what they need to do to get their goals done. If you're really tired, if you're bogged down with sugar, if you are not at your best self, it is going to be very hard for you to actually be able to focus on a specific task that you have to do on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. So Number one priority is actually taking care of yourself and not because it's like, woohoo, let's take care of ourselves, but it actually helps you work longer days, be more productive during the day and being able to focus and check tasks off your list a lot easier. Oh, yeah. So I would say making sure that you can spend a little bit of time on yeah. yourself and hitting those like health goals. I, I always one. feel different on the days that I get a, a workout in, even if it's totally. 20 minutes. And I totally agree. And you have to have the energy to sustain the activities that you need. So I love that you teach that. Absolutely. And then again, another kind of big priority I like to look at when people are feeling overwhelmed is I ask them to do a time audit of their days. And if you're really going to dive into it, I would say do at least two weeks of what are you doing every 15 minutes or every 30 minutes of your day. And I know it sounds counterintuitive because it does take a lot of effort and time to write down what you are doing. And I'm not saying wake up and write down sleeping. Obviously, you can categorize things, but be as specific as possible for those 15 or 30 minute increments. And then you can really see how are you spending your days? Are you spending them, again, just being busy for the sake of being busy what tasks are you able to delegate out? And I know I get a lot of pushback saying I'm a new entrepreneur. I don't have the funds to delegate out. And I always want to say that if you really want to be a success, you have to be able to delegate something. (laughs) It doesn't have to be everything, but one task, one item, something to be able to get over that kind of hump into the next level of success. Yeah. And Um, a lot of entrepreneurs are probably what we would call a solopreneur. So it's challenging because they feel like they're doing it all, right? If you're calling a staff meeting and you're in every seat at the table, yet you can leverage out some things, even if it's outsourcing or sometimes it's even leveraging things in your personal life that could help free up your time. Exactly. House cleaners, right. yeah, getting meal delivery services in, a babysitter sometimes, a pet sitter, depending right. on where you are in your life. Just really trying to figure out those resources so you can concentrate on what brings in the biggest ROI to the business. Mm-hmm. Also, if you're trying to do everything, you are, no matter how fit, you are going to be exhausted and you're not going to be able to sustain it. Yeah. But the time audit can really help you determine what is it that I can delegate out? What is it that I'm spending too much time on? I always like to look at too, what do you not like doing? Mm-hmm. I hate bookkeeping or anything to do with that. I'm the first to delegate that out. 
Yeah. Um, because I know that I procrastinate. I will sit there and do every other task imaginable before looking at the books because I don't like doing it. And being busy and filling our calendars with non-productive tasks is actually a way of procrastinating. So yeah. are you focusing on the right goals and to be able to do that? You have to delegate out some of the things that you're not good at, or you just don't like doing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So I have to ask Tara, are you someone who takes your own advice? Are you implementing these things in your business? Do you find that you struggle with some of the same things that maybe your clients are struggling with? It depends on the day. Yeah. So, and I always talk to my clients about that too. No one's perfect. No one's going to be a hundred percent productive every single day of the year. Mm -hmm. No one's going to feel motivated every single day of the year. When I am feeling, oh, that wasn't a really great day, or I didn't really, I don't think I did anything productive today, or I just don't feel motivated. I really do go back and I think about the big celebrities that I've been able to support and go, okay, what did they do on a day-to-day -day basis? And some of them spend a day or two on the couch watching TV because that's yeah. what they just had to do to refresh. So I always say that you can't be perfect. Nobody is not even yeah. the best person that you're following on social media. They are just putting out their best days. Yes. I try to follow my own advice as much <laughs> as I can, but I do have my bad days too. Yeah. And I think everyone needs to be reminded we're all human. And sometimes it's about figuring out a little bit about our own operating systems while we're open to knowing that other simple systems that we can implement would make a big difference, like time management systems and organizational systems, I believe that all these things help us to become more efficient, which also means that we can become more effective, which could affect our bottom line. So you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I know that is something else that you teach is how accountability around these things can actually affect profitability. Exactly. And it goes back to what are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis, hour by hour basis, that is again, like moving the needle. So the majority of us have some form of goal of making more revenue, having more clients, selling more product, whatever it is, but it usually goes back to being effective in our business and, and generating that income or larger income. So what are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis that is actually allowing you to build that higher income and therefore be more effective? We can spin our wheels and we can do all these like little tasks in the day, but is that really helping us build our bigger businesses? Probably not. I like to give the example of a lot of my clients will start their day with admin tasks. Mm. So they like to get them out of the way and they like to see what's in their inbox I don't like that in the first thing in the morning because you open up your inbox and you go down a rabbit hole of everything that's happening in your inbox. And then now one, you're exhausted Two, it's like 3 PM. What have you done? Nothing's been checked off the list. And I understand there's clients in there that need help and maybe a new client that you don't want to lose, but like a quick check, maybe okay. But let's not get sucked down in those time consuming tasks that just really aren't going to help us be effective throughout our day. I also like to be able to time block. So a lot of us have seen time blocking on different calendars, but really being effective and thoughtful about what you are putting on your calendar and at what time is really helpful and can help you be more effective throughout the day. So again, not just blocking things to block things. But are these the right things in the day that I should be concentrating on? Yeah. So I time block everything. Yet I know that there are some people who might be hearing the term and could be curious about it. What is time blocking? But more importantly, what are some of the best practices when it comes to time blocking? Yeah. So time blocking is literally how it sounds, blocking your time in your calendar for specific tasks or meetings or events. A lot of people can get out of control when they're time blocking and will block from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep. And it's literally wake up, take a shower, walk the dog. They have lunch in there. They have their exercise in there. They have all their meetings and tasks and everything. That works really well for some people. Also, I find people that are really creative 
get extremely overwhelmed yeah. because they don't see any white space. Even though there is free time built in there, they just don't visually see the white space on their calendar. And then from the moment they wake up, they think they have this incredibly busy day and they don't even do anything. They'll go play a video game instead. So it depends on who you are. I know I like to block my calendar everything and I follow it along. That's the only way I can be successful and stay on track, but just make sure you're blocking your calendar for what works well with you. You Mm -hmm. can put in those really important tasks, those really important meetings, but you don't necessarily have to block absolutely everything. I think another mistake that people sometimes make when they're first starting out with time blocking is they think that once they put it in the calendar, it is absolutely set in stone. Which is true. You want to be able to hold yourself accountable to what you're doing and what you say you're going to do and be committed to it. However, if you wake up one morning and you had a really bad night's sleep and you said at eight o'clock this morning, I am going to write the introduction to this massive business proposal and you're trying and you're trying and you just can't do it, that is okay. No need to waste your time on it unless it's due like that day, but no need to waste your time on it. Let's maybe do some other more productive tasks that you feel like you can get done and then push that off to later in the afternoon. Maybe when you've done more tasks and you're feeling more successful throughout the day and more motivated or tomorrow morning when you have a better night's sleep. So things on calendars can be moved around to a degree They don't necessarily have to be absolutely 100% set in stone. And my last kind of advice is when you're blocking a calendar, absolutely write like just block if you want focus time or work time. But I like to write myself little notes of what I'm going to do in that block. Even if you're feeling overwhelmed by a massive block on your calendar, it can really help you get started. And you can also then go back and see in this block of time, was I actually productive? Did I do any needle moving tasks? And you can take your own inventory of if you are working on the right things in your blocks of time. So what do you, most of the clients you work with come to you for? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. So there's a variety. So a lot of people are stuck on setting goals for their businesses. They don't even know where to start. Some people have set goals, but they just need help holding themselves accountable and achieving them. Other people are solo entrepreneurs who feel very siloed and just need help running ideas, bouncing ideas off of somebody, trying to figure out what the priorities should be throughout the week of being able to achieve their goals. And then I also run a fractional executive assistant company where the team will help businesses scale And get, as I keep saying, get over that kind of hump of success and really have that strategic partner to help move things forward and build bigger businesses. Great. So you work with the client more as a coach consultant? Both. So I personally work with clients as a coach consultant, and then we are also executive assistants as well. Okay, perfect. And who are some of your ideal clients? Is it a particular industry when you say entrepreneur or is it more across the board? Anyone who's really looking uh, to achieve their goals is an ideal client of mine and, and people that are really going to take the effort. However, I am partial to people who are that creative type because I, I come out of the entertainment business. Anyone who is building YouTube channels, podcasts, I actually have a few podcast creators that I love helping speakers, people wanting to advance their speaking, public speaking career, keynotes. So what, do you do, what do you do in that regard when you're helping people who are creative? Like you just mentioned, like someone who's got their own podcast or a writer, probably. What do you do to support? Yeah, them? So I help them focus on their goals and I help them focus on what they're doing on a day-to-day basis to uh, drive success. It's chunking it down, right? Because I think we all can have these big visions, but then we don't know where to start. We don't know where to start. And also a lot of 
people I find get scared that they're setting too big of a goal Mm. or sometimes they set too small of a goal and they're just like, I'll do it tomorrow because I can finish this goal easy. And then they procrastinate and then they come and they go, I'm a horrible procrastinator. But sometimes that's just because you're not setting the right type of goal. Yeah. Also love helping businesses. So startups who are really trying to scale to that next level of what can we do again on a day-to-day basis to be, for our teams to be able to achieve success. That's great. So Tara, is there a question I haven't asked you yet that you wish I had? Ooh, that's a great question. <laughs> I think <told laughs> I asked some good ones, so thanks. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we've covered a lot in this time we've had today. I I would like to say and maybe leave your audience with the fact that I I think a lot of us, especially new entrepreneurs, again, when you're trying to be busy and you're trying to have a life and build businesses and do all the things that we get stuck in the trap of trying to multitask. Mm -hmm. And I've said it a lot is the big kind of takeaways I've found from those highly successful people is that they focus a hundred percent on whatever their goal is or whatever their next step is. And there is no multitasking. There's actually no such thing as multitasking. Our brains can only concentrate on one thing at a time. Yes. So I always say that there's three steps to success and they're easy. And that is one, having a goal and two is actually focusing and becoming extremely obsessed and focused and dedicated on that goal. And three is creating your own motivation because no one out there is going to do it for you. There's going to be no lightning strike moment. I also like to say, we all know how to be healthy. We all know how to run a business. Mm -hmm. So it's just getting out there and just doing the thing. We all know what to do. So let's just do it and become a success. You you provide a lot of support and you've touched on that a lot in our conversation Mm -hmm. that being a solopreneur, you can feel very isolated and just knowing you have someone to talk to, collaborate with, bounce ideas off of, encourage you, that feels good. And I'm sure then it feels good in return, which is what is fulfilling your mission. So that's great. So Tara, tell everyone how they can learn more about you, where they can find you. I know you um, have a a lot of resources out there. So I'm going to give you some time to share that. Yeah. So on LinkedIn, I'm Tara with two R's, Tara Stubbins. My website is tarastubbins.com and also my company is Take It Easy Group. So we're takeiteasygroup.com and on Instagram and all the other socials, I'm Tara's Time. And again, that's Tara with two R's. Excellent. And I saw you offer some workshops as well. We do. We offer workshops on time management, goal setting, HR, best HR practices if you're a larger business as well. That's great. I really appreciate you taking the time to join me today. I think you dropped a lot of really important nuggets and I trust that there's someone who is going to reach out to you because you're exactly what they need right now. Thank you for being here. And I just want to thank all of you for being here. I know that you have a lot of things to do in a day. So the fact that you hung out with us means a lot to both of us. So we wish you an amazing day wherever you are and whatever you're doing. And Tara, thank you. And I look forward to seeing you sometime in the future. Yeah, I would love to come back. Thanks so much for having me. Yes, definitely. All right, everyone. Have a great week. Talk to you soon.